At this point, there are a lot of IoT service providers to choose from, and they all kind of give you about the same experience. You sign up for an account, maybe it's free, maybe it's paid. You can then send sensor data from anywhere in the world as long as you have an internet connection to that service where it's logged, tagged, stored, and you can sign into your account and get some type of dashboard. There it shows you the sensor data maybe in real time, maybe you get some line charts or a map showing you where these sensors are located, and so on. However, one area that I found lacking is the ability to run one of these services on my own computer in my own network. This has a lot of potential use cases if you want to control that data within your own network. And that's exactly what Machine Chat's Jedi One does. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install Jedi One on a Raspberry Pi and then send some simple sensor data to it from an Arduino. Let's get started. Head to machinechat.io and click on Products. Notice that you can run the service on Windows, Mac, and Linux as well, so you're not limited to just the Pi. Click on the Jedi One for Raspberry Pi link and scroll down. Notice that at this time, there are two versions. You can use some of the features for free, which is great for hobbyists or if you want to try out the software. There's also a paid version that unlocks more users and devices. Let's download the free version for our Raspberry Pi. You will need to enter your email address and Machine Chat will send you a link to download the program. Check your email and download the .zip file from the provided link. In a file browser, unzip the archive and copy the .bin file. Somewhere on the Pi, create a folder that will house the installation and database for Jedi One. I'll call mine Jedi and keep it in Pi's home directory. There, paste the .bin file and open a terminal window. First, run sudo apt update to make sure your package sources are up to date. When that's done, run sudo apt full upgrade to upgrade all of your packages to their latest versions. Press the Y key when asked if you want to continue. This will take some time to complete. After it's done, navigate into the Jedi directory and enter sudo chmod 777 mcjedi.bin to make the bin file executable. Run sudo mcjedi.bin service space install to install Jedi One as a service on your Pi and then enter sudo mcjedi.bin dash service space start to have the service start running immediately. If you look in the Jedi folder, you can see that some files were automatically generated as this is where Jedi One will store its database. At this point, the service will automatically run on your Pi whenever you boot it up. If you'd like to uninstall the service, just enter sudo dot slash mcjedi.bin dash service space uninstall from this directory. Because Jedi One runs as a service, you need to access its graphical interface using your browser. From within the Raspberry Pi, you can use localhost colon 9123, which will take you to a login screen. However, we want to use Jedi One as a remote service on our network, so I'm going to use a browser from my PC to access it. Get the IP address of your Pi by entering ifconfig in the terminal. Type out that IP address in your browser's URL bar followed by colon 9123. You should be presented with the same login screen. Enter admin for the username and admin for the password. Accept the user agreement and you'll be presented with a screen to change your password, which you should do. Answer a few security questions and click save. Enter admin and your new password to log in to Jedi One, where you'll be presented with a dashboard. As an administrator, you can go into Settings, Users to add new users. New users can view data, but the admin has to construct a dashboard for them. So we'll create this user and leave it alone for now. Information from IoT devices will flow into our server over HTTP. We can configure how we receive data by going into data collectors. We should see a default HTTP listener, so click on the edit button to view it. You should see that it's been configured to listen from any available IP address and on port 8100. Please note that this means any device on the network can send data to the server. You can change this to the IP address of your IoT sensor device if you want to prevent other devices from trying to send data to the server. Let's make a quick IoT sensor device using an Adafruit Feather Huzzah. Note that just about any other ESP8266 board will work for this. 
I'll connect it to a BME 280 temperature, humidity, and pressure sensor through I squared C. If you're using the Adafruit BME 280 board, connect 3.3 volts to the 3 volt pin on the sensor board, connect ground to ground, connect SCL to SCK, and connect SDA to SDI. I'll create a quick Arduino sketch based on the example project at Machine Chat. I'll put a link to the code for this demo in the description if you'd like to look through it or try it out yourself. We'll need the wire library for I squared C as well as the Adafruit sensor and BME280 libraries. We'll also need the ESP8266 Wi-Fi and HTTP client libraries. I'll use the onboard LED to blink some status codes, which will tell us if the board is correctly sending data to the server. This can help us know everything is working when we deploy the device and we don't have access to the serial monitor. I'll have the device wait 5 seconds between attempts to post data to the server. In the network settings section, you'll need to change the SSID and password to match the SSID and password for your particular Wi-Fi network. Change the IP address to match the IP address of your Raspberry Pi, or wherever else you're running the Jedi One server. Note that we'll keep the port at the default 8100. We'll need to keep the Adafruit BME280 object as a global so we can configure and use it in the rest of the program. In setup, let's configure the LED and serial terminal to help us debug. We'll initialize the BME280 sensor and blink a code if we can't communicate with it. Then, we'll use the Wi-Fi library to connect to our local network. In loop, we start by reading the temperature, humidity, and pressure values from the BME280 sensor. We'll print them to the serial terminal to let us know the sensor is working. Next, we construct a JSON string containing our sensor data. In this case, we'll name our target ID BME Sensor Node 1 and we'll give it temperature, humidity, and pressure fields. If the ESP8266 is still connected to the Wi Fi network, we'll turn on the LED to let us know we're trying to transmit. Note that the LED is active low on my board, so I need to use digital write low to turn it on. We then construct the address of the server using HTTP. The URL to post data is HTTP colon slash slash the IP address of the server, port number, and v1 slash data slash mc. We construct the HTTP post request and send the JSON data to the server. If the response comes back as a positive number, we know that we got a good response from the server. We parse the response code, and if it's 200 OK, we'll print that out to the serial terminal. If it's anything else, we'll blink the LED three times rapidly to denote an error. Either way, we close the connection and then turn off the LED to show we're done. If, for whatever reason, we lost the Wi-Fi connection, we'll blink the LED five times to indicate a different error. Finally, we wait 5 seconds before reading from the sensor again. The last thing we need to add is that blink LED function that we can use to flash status codes at the user. Let's upload this to our ESP8266 board. When that's done, open the serial terminal and you should see temperature, humidity, and pressure data being printed out along with an indication that the data was posted to the server. Back in Jedi 1, click on dashboards and click data view. Click add chart and give your chart a name, like temperature. We'll pick a simple line plot. Click Add New Data Source and you should see your sensor as an option. Click it and then click on Property, where you'll see the different variables we created. Let's choose Temp underscore C and make the unit C for Celsius. Click Add and you should be presented with a brand new line chart. Click the plus button to create a new chart. We'll display humidity this time, but let's try the gauge chart. Note that the free version of Jedi One only supports two charts at this time. When you have both charts created, try carefully blowing on the sensor to see the temperature and humidity rise. Note that Jedi One supports email and SMS notifications. If you go into Settings, Notifications, you can configure your email and SMS settings. From there, go into Rules, where you can build a condition. For example, let's pretend that we want something to happen if the temperature goes over 50 degrees Celsius. In Actions, we can then have it send us an email. Since I did not set up the email service, I can't do much with this right now, but know that it is possible. Finally, I'd like to show you the system view. This is where you can upload a photo, like a floor plan of your house, office, or factory, and place widgets to help you remember where these individual sensors reside. Just like with the charts, I can create a few gauges or number fields to give me readings from the sensors in near real time. 
Note that the free version of Jedi 1 only lets me put down a max of two widgets. When I'm happy with that, I can sign out of the admin account and sign back in with my user. The user can then view the charts and system view, but they cannot edit them. I hope this has given you an idea of how to get started with the Machine Chat Jedi One IoT platform. If you would like additional help with Jedi One, head to support.machinechat.io and check out all of the documentation and examples. There are even a couple of demo projects that show you how to pull sensor data directly in from the Raspberry Pi, as well as the Arduino project I just showed you in this video. You can click on Community to access a forum where you can ask questions to other folks who are using Jedi One. Good luck with your future IoT projects, and happy hacking! <laughs>